Then. Hi, this is Eric, and if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, right down there is the subscribe button. Click that, subscribe with us. We would love to have you along for the journey. Hi YouTube, I'm Eric, and I'm going to go into goals a little bit more today and accountability and what it does for us if we're suffering from depression. Um, I've suffered from depression at different points in my life for, for different reasons. Um, a big source of my depression was from drinking. Uh, I was very manic depressive, especially when I, when I drank. I thought it made me happier, I thought it made me a lot more fun. In reality, it did the complete opposite to me. Um, but one of the ways that you start to really break through is, you, is starting to set goals. And when we set goals in our life, a lot of times we, we, we reach out and, and we have that motivated day and we write down you know 10 goals that we want to accomplish. When, you, when you're setting out a goal, set out a realistic goal and, and remember that no matter what, if you don't hit that goal, you're not a failure. A lot of times when, when we're battling with depression and we're battling with a lot of things, it's hard for us to set goals because we're already down on ourselves, we're already beating ourselves up, we're already having that mental warfare in our head that trying to, to figure out what I want to do or what, the passion that I want to have in life, this is overwhelming, I can't do this. Find that day that, that your, your head is on straight and that, and that you're, you're clear and you're focused and you know what day I'm talking about. There, there's days that come through that we have that, that time of clarity and that is the day that you use to really set your goals. The days that you have that are motivated, that, that you're at that, that higher standpoint than the days that we have where we wake up and it's just a struggle to get out of bed. And write down what your goals are and what you want to accomplish. And goals aren't something that you just say, hey, this is what I want to do, I'm going to accomplish this. So many of us have done that before probably where, and, and I don't know if you can relate, but I've had it, hey, I want to do this and this is a new goal I'm going to accomplish for the year. I want to take a trip to Hawaii. And I'm going to make this happen and then all of a sudden the realities and everything of life start to set in and okay, how am I going to pay my bills and, and this goal gets tossed aside. You don't want to toss your goals aside. And what I'm going to use as an example is, is weight loss for me. So a goal that I had this year for myself personally was at the start of all of this year ago, I weighed about 300 pounds and I'm down to about 230 right now. One goal I had for this year was I wanted to be at 235. So I put that down as one of my yearly goals. And I needed to find out a way to measure it, so I have a scale. I got a daily planner so I could track you know, what days I worked out, what kind of workouts I did, whether it was lifting weights, whether it was walking, um, whatever type of uh, exercise I was doing to help me achieve my goal. And I started tracking it. So what I ended up doing is, okay, I have this goal of I want to be 235, I'm 300 pounds now. This is a lot of weight. Um, I ended up changing a lifestyle and it has to be something that you really want. And I really wanted this. Why? Because with the weight loss with me, I was not sleeping good. I, I, I was getting to the point that I was going to do a sleep test because of uh, sleep apnea. I was waking up constantly exhausted. I felt just gross. and. I just I didn't like who I was. I didn't like who I looked in the mirror. I didn't like how my clothes fit. I, 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 I didn't want to go out because I just I was uncomfortable in my own skin. And I wanted to change it. And I wanted to I wanted to do something different. So I made that decision. So when you're setting these goals, it has to be a decision. You have to set a clear decision that this is what I want. Because if you don't and you're just if you're half in and you're half out, it's not gonna happen. So I set this clear decision, okay, I'm going to get down to this weight, and here's why. I'm going to feel better, I'm going to sleep better, which means my life is going to be better, and I want to be happy with who I am, and I want to achieve something that makes me feel good, and I wanted to find out all the positives that happen when I hit and achieve this goal. So I have the goal now set of 235, and it's not easy. I mean, when you start off and you want to hit a goal, it's a lot of work to get that to be a habit, and to form a habit. People will say it takes 27 days, 21 days. I think creating a habit is kind of a lifetime experience because we have these streaks of motivation where we're, we're gun ho for two months, three months, and then we burn ourselves out. Where finding that pace is so important to hitting that goal. So what I ended up doing is last year, I sat down and wrote out 10 goals. And so one of them on the list was to reach 235. 
And how am I going to achieve this? So I quit drinking and got into sobriety, and that was a, a life decision. It was a choice because it was destroying my marriage. It was it was destroying my life. It was destroying my career. So that was a change that I had to make to hit this goal. And then I started working out. So I would start getting up earlier in the morning, start forming a daily habit and a daily routine around what made me feel good. And so I found out, okay, that I was a morning workout person. I wasn't an evening workout person because I get home from late work late and I get pushed aside. So I had to cater what I wanted to accomplish around my lifestyle, around my life. So if I wanted to work out, it has to be in the morning. So what do I have to do now? I have to wake up a little bit earlier. So I started waking up at 4.30 in the morning. And it was important enough to me that I made these lifestyle changes for it. So now all of a sudden, okay, I work out, got to the point where I got a routine down to where I work out four days, five days a week. Wanted to get it even more consistent, wanted to bring more to it, so I just started walking. And started weighing myself and started, started measuring and, and seeing my accomplishments grow. And one of the things I suggest when you, when is, is you want to lose weight or if you want to achieve a goal like this, don't do it on a daily basis because if you do it on a daily basis, you're going to drive yourself insane and in a week you're going to give up because weight loss is a great example. One day you might step on the scale and you lost five pounds and hoorah, it's a celebration. And then the next day you step on the scale and you've just gained two pounds. It has to be a little bit of time going in between each measurement. So if, if weight loss is one of your goals, set a weekly measurement. Don't do it every day. Stay off the scale. As much as we want to get on the scale and keep finding out where we're at and where we're at and where we're at, do it weekly. It makes a huge difference. And that way we can actually track what we're doing and it's not those highs and lows because as soon as we have two days or three days in a row that is low, nah, this isn't working. And a couple different things happen. We either try to change up what was working and we ruin it. Uh, we just give up completely. We stop taking it as serious, and it, it does a lot for us. And we, we, let's face it, you start to get a little bit depressed, and you start to feel overwhelmed. You can't accomplish it. So measure it in, in, in a time frame. You don't do it every day. So you start weighing yourself every day. And, and what I noticed then is when I did that, I started noticing the weight loss. All of a sudden, each, each week it was, you know, three pounds here. Oh, my goodness, a great week. I got five pounds here. And all of a sudden, my clothes and everything started fitting better. And... I realized that you know I started pushing myself a little bit harder so the workouts went to five days a week and then started walking my dog for six days a week but when you have a goal don't get obsessed with your goal and as an addict uh, I have a very obsessive compulsive behavior where I'm all of a all gun ho on something and this is my life and it encompasses it and that's all I'm gonna do and that's all I'm gonna focus on and when you're doing a goal you, you can't have it be that way because you'll burn yourself out you're gonna go hard, you're gonna go hard at it for two weeks, three weeks, maybe a month, maybe two months, and you're gonna hit that wall where you wake up and you go, I don't wanna do this anymore, I'm done. And next thing you know, you roll over in bed, you go to sleep, and you don't go back at it. And now weeks went by, and you look and go, well, you know what, I missed last week, I can miss this week too. Don't burn yourself out. And you can tell when you're starting to burn yourself out, you feel the fatigue, uh, you, you feel the mental fatigue, you feel the, maybe the physical fatigue, whatever your goal is. Don't burn yourself out with it. You have to pace yourself as hard as it is and as bad as we want to accomplish it as soon as we can because we don't have the patience and we don't want to put in the time and we want it right now. Anything that's good takes time and we have to remember that. So pace yourself and set this goal for a while out. And once you hit that goal, it's a celebration. I mean, I hit my goal about, I'd say about a month ago is when I hit, two months ago is when I hit my 235 goal. A year hadn't passed yet. And then all of a sudden, I decided I wanted to try and push it a little bit harder, and, and I started wanting to increase my goal. But I had to take a step back and realize that I've accomplished my goal, and I don't want to burn myself out. So I still stick with the same schedule, I still stick with the same workout, and still stick with the same routine instead of even trying to push it a little bit harder. And I'm not saying don't push it harder and don't go and don't, don't, don't do this. But what I'm saying is be cautious of where you are mentally and physically to the point where you don't burn yourself out. Because I got to the point where I started burning myself out. Uh, it's August and the month of July was a very difficult month for me to stick to my schedule. So don't burn yourself out when you're going through it. So take that time and when you're setting that goal, make it a clear, precise goal, something that you can measure. And set it for yourself. 
do it for yourself. Don't do it for anybody else. So set that clear, precise goal, set a time frame for it, and you can do it. And if you want it, make sure that you have the support around you when you have those days that are a little bit weaker. If, if you're trying to change up your diet, get the people around you that are eating the same way and feed off each other and support each other through it. And you'd be surprised no matter what it is you want to accomplish, there's a lot of others like you. And that's where even taking like the social media, forming some sort of accountability for yourself. With myself, it was a, a calendar. It was with friends. Um, when it comes to sobriety, I know a lot of people take to social media and, and hold their accountability through social media. We all have our different forms of accountability, so we've got to keep ourselves accountable for those goals and for that goal that you want to achieve. So go out there, set a goal for yourself, and you know what, it, you'd be surprised no matter what it is you're going through, whether it's depression, anxiety, um, the challenges of life. When we have goals and we have a direction in life that we want to go, and we set a path to do it, it's amazing what happens. And then when we accomplish it, it's amazing what changes in our life. So let me ask you this, what drives you?